Hello and welcome to the second episode of Rolling with Lebo Macholejo. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to each and every one of you um, who got to watch the first episode, right? Who showed me some love, who liked the show, um, commented on the show as well as subscribed to the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Let's keep the numbers rolling. Um, but more than anything, like I s I've said this before, I'm really, really here for the artists and catching up with them and seeing um, what's up with them and where they draw inspiration from and also just to inspire other artists out there who want to follow in their footsteps, right? And the perfect person to be inviting to the show, the second guest um, on the show is someone great. And I think someone who's also going to inspire a lot of other people just like Farai did with his music like yo people are showing some love um but yeah so I'm going to tell you how I got to meet Wussy right really really funny story um but yeah so I'm always like I, I, I'd like to think I'm a workaholic but this time I was honestly like I was literally like lying around like waiting for God or waiting for something great to happen because like I said being an artist it's tough it's really really tough um you know some months you 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 know you get a gig some months most months you're actually without a job and then you know then a month or two you're doing well and so it's really hard to balance that right um but like i said i was lying around and thank goodness for true caller my phone rings right and i swear it was like my call to adventure <laughs> never refuse the call the important call but anyways i was like what okay vusi africa right on my on my screen i'm like vusi africa how is vusi africa calling me i don't understand right and so i know vusi um i didn't know vusi i know na lady what i wanted to say is i know na lady um through a workshop right that i attended it was a basitana script writing and directing workshop but prior to that i met her um, in Pretoria for the a women's gig also same initiative and um, I think when we were at the workshop I found out that she's actually married to Bussy Africa right and this is the guy who won the most bravery award at um, Durban Film Festival um, and I was like what okay no so now I'm like I'm adding the two together and I'm like okay that's that's how I know Bussy how's Bussy calling me like okay now I'm like maybe my lady gave Bussy my number right so in all of this i'm like okay answer the phone call so i pick up the phone and i'm like you know clear my throat everything everything must be hey you ain't now <clears throat> hi hi bossy you know it's it's yeah I, I don't even know he was probably like how do you know it's me but anyways i was like hi um bossy how are you doing and he's like hey lebo so profesh you know hi lebo um my name is bossy africa and i'm calling you regarding um, catering for uh, a festival so he was going to premiere his film at rapid line film festival i know great stuff right so i'm like hey this is a gig here i'm smelling money never mind smelling money i think it was more like i just want to get out of this apartment and do something that i love um so yeah so it was just so he called to say listen um I'm calling you regarding catering for um, my premiere right at Rapid Lion. I got um, your number from someone and they said to call you, right? So I'm like, yeah, to call me, you know? Uh, but anyway, sorry, let me just, <laughs> let me calm down. So I was like, okay, cool. No, Vusi, sure. What's up? What do you need? You know? Um, so he was like, no, I just need catering for a certain number of people. I'm like, okay, cool. What time? You know, I'm, I'm taking all of these things down. And then I'm like, okay, cool. No, dude, I'm your girl. I will do this. Um, and then he hangs up, right? Went online, started getting quotes from caterers. You know, I'm like, ouch, I'm doing the job. Um, so mind you, just to give you a bit of context, I started off in um, film production and TV production as a intern, obviously, and then a production assistant. So you can imagine, and, and then a coordinator. So I knew all about, you know, locking down caterers crew talent all of that i knew how to bring the people together to chef up the production you know what i mean so i was like listen i've got this so i got a couple of quotes i think more or less like four quotes already um and then i also had my lady contact me right so she's like dude level i heard you got the gig well done and i'm like my lady i know i don't know how <laughs> but i was like i'm glad right um 
I think she was just because she's she's kind of like a little mentor, you know. So I think she was just kind of happy that you know I'm in the right space at the right time, and like how did they find like get my number for this catering gig, right? So I think she was just genuinely just saying, um, well done. Also, please do the right job um, because it's all on you. Like if food is terrible, one line. Anyways, long story short, they never end well. Never a short story. Um, but yeah, so cool. Got the necessary quotes and everything. And then, um, so I'm hoping, I'm thinking rather, that Vus is touching base, right? <laughs> Woo, guys, it's sad because, so anyways, Vusi calls me back. And he's like, hey, Nebo, um, I hope you're good and everything. Um, but listen, do you do catering? <laughs> And I kind of knew where this was going, right? Because now I'm like, hmm. I'm like, no, Vusi, I don't do catering, actually. Um, but I thought, Bella, you needed someone to assist you with that. Well, so let me also give you a little bit of context again. So even when he called, he sounded a little stressed out. You know, you can imagine this is like his premiere and you probably had so many other things to handle. And then obviously the catering. So that's why I was so quick to just be like, dude, let's do this, you know? So he calls me back and he's like, Lebo, do you do catering? And I'm like, no, Vusi, I actually don't. I was just trying to help you. And he's like, dude, like, wow, your energy, your vibe, like just the first impression. He was just like, dude, you were just so ready. You were ready to help me. And like, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. But we're looking for the real caterer. <laughs> um, but anyways, long story short, he was just great. Like just the the whole response man we were just like he understood that i was also just like you know ready trying to help out but also didn't even need to ask questions or how much am i getting or what like what was it in for me it was never about that i think he picked that up and he was just like listen i'm going to tell my wife about you you are great like honestly wow what a what a great way for someone to just be willing to help right but anyways long story short so Vusi was like dude just being so nice and just willing to help me even without asking any questions please like send me your email I am going to um, I'm going to email you um, an invite so you can RSVP you your partner your Blaswani anybody you know please come through um, and just come through and watch the film and funny enough guys I really wanted to watch the film so much like I kept Asking that lady Vele, like, yo, that lady, when is the film coming out? Is it online? You know? And at the time, it had already only shown at Durban Film Festival and I think Joburg Film Festival as well. And I didn't get to go to those film festivals. So this was just like a calling from God, right? It was just like, I wanted to go and then this call happens and then just the whole, just the way I, you know, approached the whole thing. Vusi was like, dude, no ways, you're coming to the premiere. And I got to meet him there and it was just amazing also his um personality his vibe his energy it was still the same it wasn't like this unapproachable untouchable guy when i got there you know he was still lights and cameras and everything was still on him but he was still a very nice guy so with that said geez that was a mouthful let's get to the pussy africa boom I think for me being a storyteller began when I, I realized my love for poetry, you know, and this was very early um, in my life. I think I was, um, I was doing grade 7, grade, um, grade 6, if I'm not mistaken, when I started writing poetry intentionally, you know, and, and I mean, the influence has always been there, you know, at home. I mean, my mom writes poetry and she wrote poetry at that time, you know, and, and even though she was speaking about different issues, um, it just, that sort of um, intellect kind of, you know, um, fell off onto, you know, onto, onto my lap and I found myself interested in being a storyteller and telling people stories. It was not up until I, I went to grade eight that I sort of kind of formalized my craft when I met a friend of mine by the name of Michael Sulusa and whom his brother was um, the manager of a community theatre group called um, Sevuta. And Sevuta, they're basically specialising in developing young people, you know, and bringing them into the space of, you know, of, of, um, of arts and culture, you know. And um, 
and that sort of kind of began the journey of how I got into the theater space, you know, writing for theater, directing for theater, you know, um, and, 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 um, eventually you know the decision to you know to go to to go to film school you know um but prior before that uh, i'd stayed my work at places like the national school of the arts you know um the national arts festival in prime's town now known as makanda you know um and, uh, for uh, and, and this was this was early yeah in in my in my in my, in my career i think i was about um 18 19 20 you know somewhere there i was still quite young at that time you know um i did not go i did not go to film school up until i was 22 23 or 24 um somewhere there but yeah but i was but i was a bit young when i when i well i was a bit oldish you know when i when i went to when i went to film school um if, if you if you're looking at it in that in those terms you know i think i was 23 if not so when i went to film school and um and that just sort of kind of you know be, be uh, became how i started you know um in making films How my name? <laughs> well, well, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of people well now associate you know um Fusi Africa with with filmmaking you know um they associate my name with you know with, with making films with storytelling with content and, and so forth and that for but I think um I think it is always I think I think it's not it, it has never been an issue of my name gave back to my career or my career gave back to my name I think it has always been an issue of how you see yourself as a, as a as a person you know because people identify you with what you do you know and and I mean I, I could have I could have been a pastor you know and 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 I would, and I would still be Vusi Africa you know and and the world would you know would still reckon to me as Vusi Africa you know the deacon of Vusi Africa the man of God you know um, who preaches but it was just it was just um, fortunate that I found my voice in storytelling and that sort of resonated with my name and um, this is when uh, people who are well educated speak about destiny and um, they speak about um, the influence of God um, in the things that we do you know uh, sort of it just kind of like you know became one element that meshed each other and the fact that um, I'm naturally caring about the African narrative I've always been the child of the soul you know I've always believed in um, and assert to myself as a pan african you know and and identifying with what um, pan africanism is about you know and it is about staying true to being african you know it's about propelling the narrative of africa you know here in africa and the diaspora you know it is always about impacting africa in a very positive way you know uh, the africa for africans school of thought you know and for me um, it comes for me. It comes in. It comes in a form of. It comes in a form of of storytelling. It comes in a form of telling my truth to the people. I think as a film student, I treated my career differently um, than the rest of my other peers. You know, um, my focus as a film student, I think, was on how I branch out um into into uh into the industry because you know I, I was i was well conscious of the fact that at film school i was amongst kids whom some of their parents were in the industry you know some of them had connections some of them you know i, I had none of those you know the only thing that i had um to fend for myself was my talent and and my unique voice in storytelling and my approach you know in in how i in how i laid down the narrative you know and um i use that as an advantage you know because um when 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 would be given film school projects i treat them like industry projects you know you say you say um i'm, I'm supposed to make a 24 um minute film uh you're expecting a student film i don't rock up with a student film i rock up with a professional film that any filmmaker in the in the world can actually put together you know so that was my approach my approach was not to treat my film my film student career as a film student but it was to rather treat it as a professional you know who is still a student at that time you know and that's what got um, some of my works chosen to, you know, to, for 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 broadcast, and I mean, that was, I mean, I refused to dance and Memeza, you know, and those those were those were projects that um, that I did in my infantry as a, as a filmmaker. I look at them now and I say to myself, oh, wow. 
But, you know, they're still beautiful stories, you know, and, you know, they're well shot, they're well done, you know, I mean, for, you know, I mean, for a second year film student at that time, that was just very, very groundbreaking. Working, working with a lady, um, or working, working with your partner, or working with your wife, <laughs> I don't know how to answer this one. I think, um, well, 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 before, I think, I think it is absolutely important that it is noted that before, uh, before me and Nalili uh, were a couple, we were actually colleagues, you know, we were just working together, you know, we, we were working together and, um, and it was, it was, it, we had a synergy in terms of how, in terms of how we thought, you know, in terms of how we saw content, um, how we saw production and how we saw the world, you know, and, and how we see the space of independent filmmaking, you know, and I think it was in that conversation where our vision um, sort of aligned and um, in, in, in our vision sort of aligning, I think it just became an issue of, well, let's, let's you know, let's just marry each other because um, there, were, there was just nothing else, you know, there was nothing better, you know, to, to look at apart from her, you know, and, and I think the same was, you know, for her, you know, there was nothing better to look at apart from me, you know, and we're comfortable working with each other, we're comfortable living with each other, we're comfortable talking to each other the whole day, you know, we're comfortable brainstorming with each other. So it just, it just sort of became an automated thing that got created. That, that you know we eventually found each other as husband and wife and and with that um our career sort of kind of tag along you know but um yeah it, but it's always separate you know um how we do things at home it's always separate with how we do things in the in the working space you know you know um at home you know it, it's it's always about you know we parents you know um we're building a home, you know, we, you know, in the in the space of work, it's always about we are business people, you know, feelings aside, we you know, we, we don't entertain each other as wife and, and, and husband, but we focus more on building a brand, on building a reputation, on building our craft and, and on developing um the industry in its entirety, you know, because um our vision um kind of sort of aligned in that in that way. the land of the east and um, he told us a beautiful story and when he told us the story I remember the conversation we had me and Michael afterwards and um, he was like to me did you hear what he said <laughs> and I was like yeah I heard it so um, basically what was happening is that um, the, the people who were in prison and those who were in exile, the, they were writing back home, but the apartheid government was not aware of it. So they had methods and um, organizations which were responsible for transporting um, those letters and those messages. The Letters of Hope story will will always be a a unique story you know and and i always say to um to my lady that um uh, the film could have been made by by anybody who had the access to the research you know um because it was just sort of a simple story to tell you know sort of a simple narrative um to you know to, to, to just kind of um put together you know because all the facts were there you know, the information was there readily available at our disposal for us to use it, you know. We had to travel, we had to travel the, the province of, of Mpumalanga in, in order to, in order to access it. But, um, but it was there, you know, and when, 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 um, when we had access to it and, um, I mean, I mean, the, the research took place between 2011, 12, 13, uh, 2010, 11, 12, right, and uh, I went to film school in 2013, and when I got to film school, you know, um, I shared the research with, with my lady, and, you know, and we identified the story of, you know, how we could actually, you know, be able to, you know, to, to drive the narrative and actually tell the story to the people, you know, it was just now an issue of finding the money, <laughs> you know, and um, we're just fortunate that, um, 
that my lady at that time, um, you know, she um, she 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 interned at the GFC, you know, um, and you know she she was a Basari recipient of the NFEF. Well, so was I, you know, we're both Basari recipients of the NFEF. So we're kind of like in the databases of the funding spaces in South Africa, you know, and we kind of sort of used that to just kind of navigate our way towards finding the money to make the film. But it was never a lot of money, you know. Obviously, nobody's gonna give you a lot of money, you know, to to make your to make your first feature film. I mean. I mean, it was a it was a it was a pure piece. The initial budget we we're looking at was 1.1 million, and we, we didn't have that money. You know, uh, the, the equipment cost and it's almost about 800,000 rent. You know, so we just kind of like had to um, had to speak to guys like Panavision, speak to you know um, guys like GFC, you know, and speak to NFEF, speak to you know um, speak to everybody, you know, speak to the actors, you know, and and to just kind of try and sort of you know build partnerships and bring the project uh into 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 life you know the the research was the was the beginning phase of it i think the master phase of it was how we actually put it together and 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 that that became a dream come true because um never have we ever had that kind of money at our disposal never had we ever had those kind of tools those kind of gadgets at our disposal the production design the costume the fashion of the time all the actors you know everything that we needed to be there was there you know and and we just sort of now took it and ran the opportunity and i think that's how the project was born the project was born because um a, a group of friends came together and decided to make a film i think one of the biggest things that we experienced when we were making the film was running out of money uh, it was running out of money we we, we ran out of money I mean, we did a crowdfunding campaign that amounted to nothing. Um, yeah, it, it was just, that was the biggest stumbling block, you know, and, and trying to convince crew that, let's do this. I know I can't pay you, you know, I know this is expectation to a certain degree, but, you know, I'm starting as a filmmaker. Can you guys help me make this film, you know? And, and I was fortunate that, you know, that, that you know, I, people are like, Africa, HK, let's help you, you know, and, 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 and that's how we made letters of hope. I helped, you know, people helped us. They came, they helped us, you know, the actors, they came, they helped, you know, and and, and it sort of just becomes, you know, the, the binding factor of everything, and which comes back to my first point, that if there's black people who could come together, we could unite with one vision, with one dream, you know, that makes us more powerful than anything else. But if we are, if we continue being divided, we're more weak, you know, because we can't access the resources that each of us, you know, have. True, the SAFTA. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, the SAFTA was really unexpected. Um, I don't know, man, how, how it feels to, you know, to, to win the SAFTA because, um, yeah, they haven't delivered it yet, so I don't have a SAFTA to hold. <laughs> so if I had a SAFTA to hold, I'd be holding my SAFTA and be like, winning a SAFTA feels like this. But yeah, I think just the recognition. Um, alone, you know, to, to say you are a SAFTA award winner, you um, you are a golden horn holder, you know, um, it's that's the highest statue, um, it's the highest accolade of filmmaking in South Africa that one can um, can actually um, be awarded with, you know, um, there's there's a lot of people who make this happen, you know, and um, I think the industry, because you have to get them related, you know, the industry has to recognize you, you know, so, so I, I can, I can say that um, it's because of the fact that the industry recognized my work and recognized what, what I'm trying to do, you know, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to do it, I, you know, because, um, because for me, Letters of Hope was a calling card, you know, this, you know, um, this, you know, I think up until we've made our third film, we can say, okay, this is how we do things. You know, so yeah, so the stuff that kind of became like a stamp of, you know, of we see you, you know, we see you. Um, but yeah, um, it, it hasn't got into my head as yet. So, <laughs> so I'm still, so I'm still the Goose Africa you you saw last year, or you know, if it doesn't matter when the last time you saw me, but I'm still the same old guy. You know, it's just that now I'm a Safta winner. <laughs>
<laughs> that sounds very cocky. I'm a softer winner. <laughs> but I am a softer winner, so what can you say? Well, we're still under lockdown right now. Um, pandemic continues. Um, the film is not out yet. Yeah, hey, it's a fight with letters of hope. <laughs> Uh, it's a fight. So, um, yeah, the film is not out yet. We're hoping that the film is going to come out, you know, soon and people will be able to see it. Um, and they can get inspired, you know, we can inspire each other. And yeah, you know, what, what am I hoping that young filmmakers can, can take away from my career? Um, <laughs> I don't know when you say young filmmakers, which one I'm referring to, because I'm a young filmmaker myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can what can aspiring filmmakers take away from my career? Um, do it, do it. Um, uh, that has always been the drive of how we do things. You know, uh, even how we made the girl cry. I mean, we, we didn't have money. We had about six thousand rents and a couple of friends. We got into a car, we took a camera, drove to Mpumalanga, we shot a film. You know, even with how we made the mesa. We didn't have money, we had about 8k, you know, got our friends together, got into a car, drove to Mamilori, you know, we made a film, you know, and, and that's how films are made in the independent space, you know, there's no money coming, you know, uh, until, well, until you can say you are somebody and then people can maybe trust you with their money, but up until now, I've never gotten money to make a film, up until the letters of hope, I've never gotten money to make a film, all the films that I made before letters of hope, I made them with my own money, with the money from my friends, with money from friends of my friends, you know, it has always been about where can we get the money from, who has it, who can give us 2,000 rand to just shoot one scene, you know, it has always been about that, and that is the spirit of independent filmmaking, can you put the resources together, even if you have 500 bucks, you can make a film. You know, uh, it's, just, it's just, you know, it's just, we need to start thinking in how can we best utilize our resources. I mean, Hollywood came all the way from America to come to South Africa to shoot, um, <laughs> to shoot the last days of American crime in Johannesburg. <laughs> and they made it look like the United States of America in Johannesburg. So that tells you that in, as South Africans, we are spoiled with locations. You can just step outside of your house and you have the world at your at your disposal. So we need to start thinking like how other people outside of South Africa see South Africa. We need to start seeing ourselves in that way. If we start seeing ourselves in that way, it's going to be easy for us to make films because we'll have an understanding that we have access to locations. And that's what um, a lot of countries don't have. We, we've, we've got, if you want to shoot Congo, we have Congo here in South Africa. We've got Zaya in South Africa. We've got Nigeria in South Africa. You can, you can literally turn South Africa into anything that you want it to become. So, yeah, man, let's just, you know, let's, let's hook it up and let's start making films. I know, I told you guys, right? Amazing guy. He is, like, so inspiring. And, um, and that's what the show is all about. You know, we want to bring people on here, artists in all fields, um, just to show us their background, where they started and how they got to where they are now things don't just happen overnight you don't just win a SAFTA award you know the, there's a lot of work that goes into it there's a lot of um networking that goes into it there's a lot of begging <laughs> that comes with it um but it's all really worth it in the long run um so i'm really really glad that we got to speak to Bosi, and uh, because i was privileged enough to to watch the film as soon as it comes out like on cinema or in cinema online like yo it's really really worth it the film was brilliant it was honestly an eye-opener i think especially even after like what happened like with george floyd in america and just in general um just when it comes to racial issues and where we really come from like i feel like this story is just that you know um it just says a lot about how each and every person back then even now it's important even now it's important to play your role play your part because you have no idea what the actual cause is there's there's a, a bigger picture there's 
a, a, there's a reason why we do everything that we do and there's a reason why we need to help each other out. There's a, I mean, even Busi said it himself that, you know, we need to unite as Africans. We are stronger when we unite as Africans. And I think even Burner Boy said this himself. He shared a letter that Fela Kuti wrote and he was just saying how, let's remember that we need to unite as Africans. Okay. With that said, I want to say, please don't stop. Don't be sad. Don't stop. I don't know what I'm saying. I just wanted to say don't stop um, watching the show, showing some love. Please do like um, the channel, the show itself. Please, like I said, comment if you think you know of someone that I should look into um, interviewing. Um, and what else? Subscribe to the channel. Warning that I'm on. Thank you. I'm Lebu for the invite, you know, and um, thank you everybody for watching. Um, what is it that we need to do next? let's just celebrate each other let's celebrate africa and let's all tell african stories let's all be brave in what we do and let's not be afraid you know um fear will never take us anywhere you know um thank you so much